Hey there, Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you for joining me for another video. Today's video features the So Pretty bundle from Concord and Ninth. This bundle includes a stamp set, dies, thread, needles, and cardstock. This kit is for stitching on your cards. It's so much fun. I created three cards in this video today, and I really just enjoyed the process of stitching on these cards. And I'm really happy that I am here today with Concord and Ninth um, featuring their new release for the month of July. So this will be the first in four different videos that I'm doing for Concord and Ninth. So watch out for these videos every Friday for the next four weeks. All right, so let's get stitching. Before we start stitching though, let's go ahead and make a background that we can do the stitching on. So I'm taking one of my favorite stencils. Maybe you can tell it's been used a lot. Um, it's called Polka Dot Wall from Fun Stamper's Journey. I'm using Distress Ink in Peacock Feathers and a blending brush to just really subtly blend a background onto this I don't want it to be dark and I kind of want it to have a faded out look. So at the edge, it fades to white. So there we have it. I love how it turned out. This color and polka dots, so me. All right, so let's take this die from the um, So Pretty die set and we're gonna go ahead and die cut that. Now when I die cut these, I love to run it through and then back to make sure that those holes pierce out really well. Now they don't always fall out when you die cut them, but they're not stuck in there. You just need to give them a little push with like a piercing tool. I'm also going to die cut this flower and leaf uh, die, and then I will have a flower that I can also stitch. And before I stitch it, I'm gonna take the coordinating stamps and stamp them right over the top of that die cut image. So I'm using Rouge Ink for the flower from Altenew, and that is pretty easy to line up. And the thing is, it doesn't, it's one of those that doesn't have to line up exactly. So I love that. All right, then we'll use some Frayed Leaf Ink for the leaves, and that will also line up so easily. And then I have a stamped image that I can stitch. And I love that you can use this with just this die, or you can use it with the die and the stamps, or you can just use the stamps. So that's really cool. Now these thread colors that Concord and Ninth has put together, such a great color combination. I love it and they match my card so perfectly. So I'm gonna pull out a piece of this coral colored thread to go around my flower. I'm matching it up, but you could also do colors that are um, complementary or colors that would make the thread pop. You, just so many options. I have split this thread down the middle to make it thinner. So it has actually three strands and that's gonna just have a little bit more delicate of a look. I'm gonna use a little piece of tape on the back, some tape runner to hold my thread down. I could just tape it there, but I am going to cut this image out when I'm done. So when you're stitching, you wanna go up from the back and then down through the next hole. Then you're gonna go up through the next hole, but then take a back stitch and go down the hole that you just went down. So you go up one hole and back down through the one you just came through. All right, so that is how I stitched every card, every piece on these cards today. And it is a really clean look from the back as well as the front, and it goes pretty quickly, but it is so addicting. I just want you to know, like once you start stitching these things, you might wanna stitch all the things. So I went all the way around this and gave it a really cute little border. I'm gonna snip that off, tie it in a knot. So I just took the two ends and tied them in a knot. Then I'm gonna pull out a piece of this darker green thread. There's two colors of green in this kit. This is the darker of the two. And then I'm going to separate that down the middle so it's the same thickness as the thread I used for the flower. And I'm using the same exact stitch. You go up and down one set of holes and then you go up the next hole 
take it back down the one you just came through and that will give you a nice stitch all the way around. And once that was finished, I thought I was gonna be done. I thought this was it. And then I had an idea to stitch the center of the flower. So around the edge of this flower, the holes go um, up, down, up, down, up, down. And so what I decided to do was go through only the holes that were down, go up through that hole, and then down through the center all the way around, creating a somewhat spoke-like look. Yeah, you could do this where you went through every hole, the ones that are up and the ones that are down, for a more full flower. And that would look really good if you were using this die without the stamped images. It would fill it in. And you could even do it with two different colors, like the holes that are down in one color, the holes that are up in another color. I'm telling you, it's totally addicting, right? So once that was finished, I tied off all my threads, and then I went ahead and took my scissors and cut this out. I did leave kind of a wide white border around the edge because I didn't pull my thread super tight. So it was a little loose on the back and I didn't want to accidentally snip that and ruin all my hard work. So that's why there's quite a bit of a white border there. And then we can go ahead and stitch the diamond on this card and you can see how it leaves that opening so you can set the flower there. Love that. So I'm doing the same exact stitch up and then go back down the hole you just went through. So it's really easy. If you've never stitched before, you're gonna find this pretty easy to do. It's lots of fun. All right, so we'll tie that off and then we're going to bring in our sentiment. It says, dear friend, I love that this stamp set has so many different sentiments for different occasions. I'm gonna stamp this in Evergreen Ink by Altenew and put that right in the center of my diamond. It's a darker green that really um, coordinates well with that darker green thread. So I love how that just draws out that darker color. Now to hold my kind of baggy thread down, I used a bunch of foam squares. I am not above using tons of foam squares at all. <laughs> Doesn't bother me one bit. So that's gonna to stick to my card very well and hold the thread in place and I love that little opening there. So to finish this off, I felt like I needed a little bling, a little sparkle, so I pulled out some rhinestones and I put one in the center of that flower and then just a few more scattered on there to dress it up a little bit. And then this will go onto a note card that measures five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a fourth. And to hold that on, I'm using some double-sided tape because you've got that bulk on the back from the thread, and so I feel like you need a little something, you know, a little something more sturdy to hold this on. And then I even put some more on the ends, just for good measure. And this is going to go onto Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock in 110 pound. And that finishes up card number one. Love it. Those polka dots make me so happy. Polka dots and stitching, yeah, so fun. All right, let's use that same die again, but this time, let's bring in something super cool. It's this little tiny die in the set that finishes up this diamond. So if you wanted a whole diamond and not one with an opening, they have a die for that. And the edge of it has a little wave, and the edge of the diamond has a little wave. So it almost like locks into place so that you don't have to worry whether or not your diamond is gonna be perfect, right? They just took the guesswork out of it for you. Thank you very much, Concord and Ninth. I love it. So cool. All right, so we have our diamond in the center of that sturdy white cardstock, and then you just go around and push out those little holes that have stayed in, or circles, I guess they're circles. And then I'm gonna take the coordinating diamond stamp, ink that up with honey drizzle ink, and I'm gonna stamp one on either side of my die cut diamond. And instead of moving the stamp, I'm just gonna flip my cardstock around in my Misty and stamp that a second time on the other side. And that finishes off the background for this card. Now for the thread, I decided to use the yellow and the red thread from this one. I'm pulling out a strand of each. I'm going to separate both of them down the middle, so I'll have 
three strands of yellow and three strands of the red. I'm gonna put both of those into the needle and stitch them at the same time. So I have a red and yellow diamond all the way around. And there we have our stitched diamond shape for card number two. I've tied that off in a knot to finish it up. And now I'm going to make a sentiment strip for this card with crimson ink and the thank you stamp. I'm also going to stamp some flowers for this card. I have the largest flower I'm stamping in honey drizzle and then the largest flower on this multiple flower image. It goes with a kind of leafy stem piece, but I'm going to use it like this for this card and I'll show you how it works using the whole stamp on the next card. So I just fussy cut those out and then I'm going to pierce some holes in the center. Two holes very close together on both or all of the flowers, all three of them, yes, and I'm making two holes so we can create a French knot in the middle. So you just pull your thread up through one hole, make sure there's a knot in the end, wrap the thread around two times, and then back down through the second hole. All right, and then you have a cute little French knot. I'm gonna tie off the ends in a knot as I've done before to secure that into place. And then we can just trim off those ends and I will use dimensionals to pop these up on the card at the end. All right, so again, tie a knot in your thread. That's how I tie a knot in it. Up through one hole, you're gonna lay your needle down and then wrap your thread around the end of your needle two times and then tuck that through the second pierced hole. Up through the back, wrap it around twice, down through the second hole, just like that. Now my yellow one didn't come out perfect, but I decided to go with it anyway. I'm gonna pop this sentiment strip up with foam tape on this card. I'm using my T-square ruler to make sure that it's straight, and then I can trim off those edges that hang off. And that just has a clean, crisp look. I love when it goes all the way across. All right, so I'm popping up these flowers with some foam squares to finish up this card. The last thing I'm gonna do is to mount it onto a piece of Summer Days cardstock from Fun Stamper's Journey, and it will have a border all the way around. So this card base measures four and a fourth by 11 and is scored at five and a half, and the card front is a fourth of an inch smaller. So it's four inches by five and a fourth to give you that nice yellow border all the way around. And I love that with stitched cards, the stitching is a star of the card, and the rest can be left pretty simple and it's still a beautiful card. All right, card number three. We're creating a background for this card using that diamond stamp. I'm using my grid to get the stamp nice and straight and then picking it up with an acrylic block. And I'll be stamping this down with Silverstone ink from Altenew, inking that up each time I stamp it. And I'm gonna stamp the first one approximately in the center of the card. That was the goal. Now it didn't come out perfect, but I just kept going and in the end, I really liked the background that I came up with. So if you ever find yourself in that position where it didn't come out exactly how you wanted, sometimes you just gotta power through it and you're gonna get a good result in the end or maybe good enough. But I liked how this turned out and so I went with it and I used it even though the corner on that one I just stamped, I didn't ink it up very well. You can see it's lighter there, but it was okay. It's a handmade card. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just gonna stamp this repeatedly, overlapping those diamonds, filling in the edges as well to make my background. It's kind of maybe Argyle inspired, and I love the way that it turned out. And I would have to admit that this kind of stamping like this 
is a little intimidating to me. It makes me a little nervous. So I like to do those things every once in a while, step out of my comfort zone and make something different. And that's what I did today. And it was fun and I loved it. So this is the last one to finish up this background. And then we're gonna bring in my favorite die from the So Pretty die set, the Hello. I'm gonna use this so much. So I just used my ruler again to make sure that that was straight. It's not an exactly straight word, so it's a little forgiving, I like that. So we'll tape that down. Now see these little extra holes or circles on your plate? Make sure you remove those before you die cut again or it will make an impression into your cardstock. And ask me how I know. It's on card number two. All right, so we're stitching up this hello with the yellow thread. I did not separate it. This is a full piece of thread and I'm doing the same exact stitch, but what I did want to point out to you is that on this hello, your lines cross over each other, and you're gonna end up using some of the holes more than one time, and in particular on this H, you're gonna use one of those spots four different times. So I'm just gonna let this play out for a little bit so you can see that, and I would say my biggest tip for stitching this hello is to go in the order as if you are writing the word. So follow that and it will really help you. If you're not sure about where to go and you accidentally go in the wrong spot, it's okay to then go ahead and back stitch out of this. Out of that, the holes that this um, these dies make are big enough. You can easily do that. So it takes some of that fear out of it. Of that, you know, what if I mess up? Am I gonna have to ruin this whole sheet of paper or waste a bunch of thread? Not necessarily. One other thing that you wanna be careful about when you're using a long piece of thread like this and you're pulling in and pulling out, you can get your thread all tangled up and it can make a little knot. So you just wanna be careful of those and try to catch them before you pull it into a really tight knot because then you might have to tie it off and start again. All right, so we're coming up on that spot I was telling you about where your needle is gonna go through the same hole four times. So here I am going through it a third time. Oh, see my knot again. This one got a little tight, um, but you just wanna be really tender and patient with it, and you can probably get it out. And then I like to just pull on my thread a little bit to get the twists out of it, and that helps it to stop um, twisting up and getting in a knot. All right, so here again, I'm going up through the hole, and then I'm gonna go down for the fourth time through that same spot. So I've slowed this down a little bit so you can really see what I'm talking about here, right there. And then you can see how it crosses over and uses that same exact spot. And these holes are big enough that it's not too hard to get your needle through at all. So it is fairly easy. There you have it. All right, so if you ever get to a spot and you're just, I don't know where to go, pull out the packaging for the die set and it has the stitched image for you. So you can kind of figure it out. I wasn't sure on my O and it really helped me. So use that to your advantage. That's what it's there for. That completes my hello, love it. And now I'm going to stamp a sentiment for this one. It says happy birthday from the same stamp set on a piece of Riverstone cardstock with clear pigment ink and white embossing powder. Now when I stamp with clear pigment ink and especially on sentiments, I will ink up my image and stamp it two or three times just to get a thick layer of ink on that. All right, I'm sprinkling on white embossing powder and embossing that with my heat gun once it's nice and hot. And then I'm using that branch image. It stamps the leaves and openings for the second layer of this image, the flowers. And those flowers fit right in those openings. So I'm stamping those with honey drizzle. Such a good yellow. And you can see right through it and see easily where these are supposed to land once you stamp them. I'm gonna cut this out with some scissors, turning my paper instead of turning my hand with the scissors, makes it go so much easier. 
Before I stick everything down, I decided to splatter my card front with some silver silk from Fun Stamper's Journey. Um, it just needed that little something extra. So I set that aside to dry while I put some white liner tape on the back of my sentiment. And then I'll stick this down to the card front. And I, you can see I stamped the happy birthday over to the right a little bit. I just love how it's offset like that. And then I didn't have to worry about lining it up exactly in the center, right? And then I stuck my flowers down with some dimensionals. It hangs off the edge a little bit, so I'll just give that a little trim. And then we can fill the back up with double stick tape and stick that down to a Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock and 110 pound. It's five and a half by eight and a half and scored at four and a fourth. Perfect size for my card front. And again, I'm gonna bring out those rhinestones to dress up my flower and add a little bling to my card. And that finishes it off. I love the So Pretty bundle. I will be making more cards with it. I wanted to make one more for this video, but it was long enough. So maybe watch for that on my blog or my Instagram. Everything that I've used is listed and linked for you below. If you have any questions, just ask. I love to interact with you guys. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe. I have new videos every week. And I'll be back next Friday with another new product from the July release from Concord and Ninth. Thanks so much, guys. I love sharing my creations with you. I hope you have a fabulous weekend and happy stamping. Bye.